All right, so welcome. So for this video, I'm going to show you guys how to play silver and gold. Now this is an interesting uh, sort of like a roll and write game. And um, what we're going to the theme of the game is we're basically trying to basically find buried treasure. Okay, so that's the theme of the game is to try to find buried treasure. Now, in this game, you're going to be with a marker that comes with the game, and there's four of these that come with the game. With this marker, you're going to start marking up cards. Um, these are your treasure cards here, and this is the treasure deck, and these are available treasure cards that you can acquire after you complete a treasure card. When you complete a treasure card, every single box here on the card will be filled in with an X. And you'll just simply put an X down, like so, for instance. And don't forget, uh, the game does not come with any napkins or any paper towels, so have one of these handy, because it is a dry erase. So as soon as you just simply do that, ooh, it magic, it's magic. It's gone. So just make sure you have this handy, so that way when the game is over, you'll be able to basically clean off all your cards really well before you put them back in the box. But, uh, so basically, we're going to be trying to fill in these boxes. Now, we can't just simply choose whatever, we can choose whatever box we want, depending on a particular pattern. Now, we have these treasure cards here, and this, this is the expedition cards here. One of these cards will be drawn at random, obviously from the top, so they were shuffled, obviously, so that it'll, it'll be a random pattern. And then based on that pattern, we'll be able to fill in some boxes, okay? Now the cool thing is they come in a variety of patterns and you can rotate the patterns. So like, for instance, if one of the patterns was, I don't know, an L, for instance, and it was going in this direction, well, you could turn it so that way you can fill in these instead because it's the L going this way or an L going this way or an L going this way. As long as the shape remains the same, you can rotate the pattern here to suit um, your interest. Now, sometimes you'll get a pattern that won't fit in with any of these boxes. And that will be that will probably happen because as you fill them in, the boxes, there'll be less of them. And you'll get a pattern that's just too big for any of these treasure cards to handle. When that happens, you can just mark a single box with an X. Just one. One. Okay? Just one. But that's what you can do. Now, you'll notice some of these treasure cards here, they have a bunch of different symbols on them. Uh, this one's got a coin. This one's got two X's as well. Also, you'll also notice that uh, Manta up here, he's got some X's and he's got some coins, but he's got a palm tree on this one up here. Okay, so those are all the different symbols that will possibly be in these boxes that you'll be marking off. Now, whenever you mark off a coin, okay, whenever you put an X on a coin, you're going to you're going to basically put an X here on your scorecard here, on the on the leftmost coin at the top of the card, and then when you complete a row of coins, meaning you've X'd out four coins on treasure cards that you've you've uh, basically X'd out thus far, what you're going to do is you're going to take the left most av available trophy. So if somebody else has already claimed to the first one, they'll put an X on it, marking it up so that way everyone knows that that's a trophy they won. But you'll take the left most. So if you're the first one to claim a trophy, you'd get six points, and you're going to write six on this trophy here. And then you're going to continue. You're going to continue to fill in these coins as you go. Now at the end of the game, all of these, tro all the points that you got for obviously completing trophies, and for every coin that you put an X on here, it's going to give you an extra victory point at the end of the game. So you're going to add up the numbers that you acquired through the trophies, plus the amount of coins that you X'd out to basically count up that many points that you received for that total. Now, another thing you'll X out is the palm trees. And when you X out a palm tree, you're going to get one point for the palm tree plus one additional point for each palm tree that is here in this available uh, treasure cards here that are available. But right now, there's only one additional palm tree here. So if you were to X out this palm tree now, you would put the number two on that first box there next to that palm tree. 
and the reason why that's uh, the reason why that's important is you can only do this scoring a maximum of four times. So once you've reached four, you can't, uh, no matter how many more palm trees you X out, you won't get any more points for. But then this box here will total up at the end of the game how many points you got for all of the palm trees that you were able to score. Now, it is possible sometimes to also, also X out two separate palm trees on your treasure cards here. If you manage to do that, meaning you crossed off a palm tree here, and if there was a palm tree here or here or something like that, and you, you were able to do it you know, in two different locations, you would actually, it would be, it would count as two different scores. So you'd do the first one of your choice, and then you'd have to do the other one, and that would obviously fill in two of the four. So it's not like you get um, to do it you know, less often or more often. You're going to do it per time you X out a palm tree, but the maximum you'll always get is four. Now, another thing you'll notice is there are X's on these cards here. This one has it, and this one has it. Whenever you mark up, put an X on a box with an X, you get to put another, another. you get to mark up another box with an X for free every time you do it. So if you were to fill in this X right here, and then you came over here and filled in this one, that means you would still get to fill in another one. And you don't have to fill in the card that you X'd out when you get that X. You can do it over here, for instance, instead. So it's a, a nice little way of trying to help you complete, obviously, um, your treasure cards, obviously. Now, there are a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Looks like there's eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the last one here will never get revealed, okay? You're going to reveal these one at a time. The first player is going to do it. And each round, I mean, each time you, um, you reveal the next one, it'll be the next player who reveals the next one. Now, the reason why that is significant is when a player is able to complete a treasure card or is able to gain a trophy, it'll be the player who is is the first player who revealed that expedition card who is going to have first pick, meaning they're going to get the first available trophy on the left and they're going to get to choose, you know, obviously which treasure cards they want to put over here. Now, you're always going to obviously add to this when you need to. You're always going to fill that up with more treasure cards as you go along. But that's that's relevant. So whoever is first player uh, during you know the expedition card that is currently revealed is going to have first pick, and then it's going to go clockwise from there. So that's something you're going to want to make sure you you know keep an eye on who is currently first player, because it could obviously uh, mean a, an extra point for sure, especially with the coins involved. And maybe there's a particular card a particular player wants. So that is relevant, and that's obviously something to make sure you remember about that. Now, of course, not only that, but once you've reached the last one and there's only one left, you will actually not reveal this one this round. Actually, what happens is once all of the expedition cards have been revealed, except for this one, what you're going to do is you're going to put an X on the first round, and that marks the end of the first round. So it goes by really fast, this game. And once you've X'd out the fourth round, so one, two, three, and four, the game is over. And then you'll count up your score. It's, it's as simple as that. Now, obviously, uh, there's some additional points here you're going to get. You're going to get points for all of the uh, numbers that are on your cards in total. So every card, every treasure card you were able to finish, you're going to count up all of the points on those cards in the leftmost corner, obviously. Then you'll notice that some of these also have a bonus. That's This is called a seal. And it, it's relevant for this location here on your scorecard. This mean this this bonus here means that you're going to score one additional po additional point for every card, every treasure card you completed that was green. So if I only completed this one that was green, I'd only get, and I also completed this one, I'd only get one additional point and that'd be it. But if I had five greens completed, and I also completed this card here, then I'm gonna get five points and then I'm obviously going to put it there. Now, if I have other seals 
that have different colors and different numbers, I'm going to include that into the equation and then put the corresponding amount of points. And then obviously, once these four boxes here have been filled in, this one, this one, this one, and this one, you'll add those four numbers together and for your total score. And then whoever has the most points will win the game. And that is how you play silver and gold. So in the next video, we're going to do a simple little gameplay to see how this will go. Mantum is going to be my opponent, and I thought, you know, maybe he'd like to be in the whole camera this time, since there's, this is like the first time that there's actually room for him completely in the video. So I'll see you guys in the gameplay video of this game in the next video. And if you guys don't watch the gameplay, don't hesitate to leave a like if you guys like to the how to play of this game. Um because this is kind of a pretty fun little game. It's definitely a game I think just about anybody is going to enjoy. Maybe not necessarily kids, because it's not as uh, um, colorful, it's not as, uh, uh, there's not as much uh, action or, you know, animals involved or something cartoonish, magical, that kind of stuff. It doesn't have any of that in this game. It's just, you know, a little bit of... Uh, filling in boxes and stuff like that but most adults i think especially you know you know older adults would will, will enjoy this game because it's pretty straightforward it's simple it's fun and it's you know just it's it's definitely something that uh, a lot of people are definitely used to it's got something that it's it's definitely got something that a lot of people are used to so i'll see you guys in the next video